Stone Cold Steve Austin Steve Austin, born Stephen James Anderson on December 18, 1964, later Stephen James Williams, better known by the ring name Stone Cold Steve Austin, is an American former professional wrestler, actor, producer, and television host. Austin enjoyed a successful career as stunning Steve Austin in World Championship Wrestling, WCW, from 1991 to 1995. After a brief stint in Extreme Championship Wrestling, ECW, in late 1995, he signed with the World Wrestling Federation, WWF, now WWE, as the ringmaster. Rebranded as Stone Cold Steve Austin the following year, he gained significant mainstream popularity as a brazen, vulgar, beer-drinking antihero who routinely defied the establishment and his boss, company chairman Vince McMahon. This persona of Austin's became the poster boy of the Attitude Era, a boom period in WWF business in the late 1990s and early 2000s. He also introduced the long-standing what, chant in professional wrestling. A number of prominent industry figures, including McMahon, have declared Austin to be the biggest star in WWF slash WWE history and stressed that he surpassed the popularity of Hulk Hogan. Veteran professional wrestling journalist Wade Keller remarked that Austin is in every conversation for the greatest wrestling act of all time, as well as for the most profitable and the most influential. Austin held 19 championships throughout his wrestling career, as he is a six-time WWF World Heavyweight Champion, a two-time Intercontinental Champion and a four-time WWF Tag Team Champion thus making him the fifth Triple Crown Champion in WWE history while also being a two-time WCW United States Heavyweight Champion, a two-time WCW World Television Champion a one-time WCW World Tag Team Champion and a one-time NWA World Tag Team Champion in WCW. He was also the winner of the 1996 King of the Ring Tournament as well as the 1997, 1998 and 2001 Royal Rumbles, making him the only three-time winner of the event. Furthermore, he was awarded the unsanctioned Million Dollar Championship by Ted DiBiase. Austin has main event multiple pay-per-view events for the WWE, including three WrestleManias, 14, 15, and X7. He was forced to retire from in-ring competition in 2003 due to a series of knee injuries and a serious neck injury. Throughout the rest of 2003 and 2004, he was featured as the CO General Manager and Sheriff of Raw. Since 2005, he has continued to make occasional appearances and was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2009 by Vince McMahon. In 2011, Austin returned to WWE to host the reboot of the reality series Tough Enough. Early Life Austin was born in Austin, Texas. His parents, James and Beverly Anderson, nay Harrison, divorced when he was around a year old. His mother moved to Edna, Texas, and in 1968, married Ken Williams. Austin adopted his stepfather's surname and later, legally changed his name to Stephen James Williams. Austin has three brothers, Scott, Kevin, and Jeff, and one younger sister, Jennifer. Kevin is less than a year younger, and Austin has hypothesized in his autobiography that their father may have left because he could not handle another child so soon. Austin spent most of his childhood in Edna, Texas. After finishing his schooling from Edna High School, Austin got a football scholarship at Wharton County Junior College, followed by a full scholarship at the University of North Texas. Professional Wrestling Career Early Career, 1989-1990 Deciding to become a wrestler, Austin joined Chris Adams School in the Dallas Sportatorium, where Adams also wrestled for World Class Championship Wrestling, WCCW. Adams' training was purely technical, teaching Austin the moves, but nothing relating to Kafabi, still somewhat a guarded secret at the time, or business. His first lesson in that came from Tony Falk, the referee in his 1989 televised WCCW debut against Frogman LeBlanc, who called the spots to lead him to a pinfall and a $40 payday. Initially working under his real name, 
he was named Steve Austin by Memphis Booker Dutch Mantel during the merger of World Class and the Continental Wrestling Association CWA, into the United States Wrestling Association USWA. The name change occurred to avoid confusion with Dr. Death Steve Williams, a well-known wrestler during that time. Austin later returned to Dallas, managed by Percy Pringle and accompanied by Jeannie Adams, Adams' ex-girlfriend and Austin's girlfriend at the time, and feuded with Adams and his wife Tony. Austin then left the USWA in 1990 and signed with WCW the next year. It was during this time Austin adopted the stunning nickname that followed him to WCW. World Championship Wrestling, 1991-1995 the Dangerous Alliance, 1991-1992 Austin was originally paired with a valet named Vivacious Veronica, but was later joined by Jeannie Adams, known as Lady Blossom. Just weeks after his debut, Austin defeated Bobby Eaton for his first WCW World Television Championship on June 3, 1991 and later that year joined Paul E. Dangerously's Dangerous Alliance. Austin lost the WCW World Television Championship to Barry Windham in a two out of three falls match on April 27, 1992, but regained the title from Windham on May 23 and enjoyed a second lengthy reign as champion before losing the title to Ricky Steamboat on September 2, while the Dangerous Alliance disbanded shortly thereafter. At Halloween Havoc on October 25, Austin replaced Terry Gordy teaming with Dr. Death Steve Williams to wrestle Dustin Rhodes and Wyndham for the unified WCW and NWA World Tag Team Championships. The teams wrestled to a 30-minute time limit draw. The Hollywood Blondes and the Stud Stable, 1993-1995 In January 1993, Austin formed a tag team known as the Hollywood Blondes with Brian Pillman. They won the unified NWA and WCW World Tag Team Championship on March 3 by defeating Ricky Steamboat and Shane Douglas and held the title for five months. At Clash of the Champions XXIII on June 16, the Blondes faced Ric Flair and Arn Anderson in a two out of three falls tag team title match and were defeated, but retained the title as one fall had been determined by a disqualification. At Clash of the Champions XXIV on August 18, Austin and Pillman were scheduled to defend their title against Anderson and Paul Roma, but a legitimate injured Pillman was replaced by Steven Regal, with whom Austin lost to Anderson and Roma. With Pillman still injured, Austin joined Colonel Robert Parker's stud stable. After Pillman returned, Austin betrayed and defeated him in a singles match at Clash of the Champions XXV on November 10. At Starcade on December 27, Austin defeated Dustin Rhodes in a two out of three falls match with two straight falls to win the WCW United States Heavyweight Championship. Austin lost the title to Ricky Steamboat on August 24, 1994 and was scheduled to face Steamboat in a rematch for the title at Fall Brawl on September 18, but Steamboat was unable to wrestle due to a legit back injury and Austin was awarded the title by forfeit. His second reign with the title ended just minutes later when he lost to Steamboat's replacement, Jim Duggan, in a match that lasted 35 seconds. Austin unsuccessfully challenged Duggan for the United States Heavyweight Championship at both Halloween Havoc on October 23 and Clash of the Champions XXIX on November 16. After returning from a knee injury in early 1995, Austin took part in a tournament for the vacant WCW United States heavyweight title, where he defeated Duggan via countout in the first round, but lost to Randy Savage in the quarterfinals. In 1995, Austin was fired by WCW Vice President Eric Bischoff after suffering a triceps injury while wrestling on a Japanese tour Bischoff and WCW did not see Austin as a marketable wrestler. Additionally. Bischoff thought Austin was hard to work with. Extreme Championship Wrestling, 1995 Austin was contacted by Paul Heyman of Extreme Championship Wrestling, ECW, who had managed him in WCW. Heyman hired Austin to do in-ring interviews as he still had not recovered from his injury enough to wrestle. While in ECW, Austin used the platform to develop his future Stone Cold persona as well as a series of vignettes running down WCW in general and Bischoff in particular, 
most memorably in several promos that mocked his then status as Nitro host by introducing Monday NyQuil, where he was joined by Bongo, a set of drums, meant to represent Steve Mongo McMichael, in promoting the show where the big boys play with each other. Several wrestlers have credited ECW as the place where Austin developed his microphone skills. Austin has credited Heyman as the man who taught him how to cut a promo. While with ECW, Austin was known as superstar Steve Austin and had a match with the Sandman and feuded with Mikey Whiprack. Whiprack, who was the ECW World Heavyweight Champion at the time, defeated Austin for the title at November to remember on November 18. During this time, Austin learned Whiprack's finishing move, the Whippersnapper, and would adopt it and popularize it in his later career as the Stone Cold Stunner. The Sandman defeated Austin and Whiprack in a triple threat match at December to Dismember on December 9 for the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. Heyman would later state that he had wanted Austin to win the title, but Austin had refused because he felt he was more effective as the hunter, rather than the hunted. World Wrestling Federation slash Entertainment slash WWE The Million Dollar Corporation, 1995-1996 Austin joined the WWF after Kevin Nash and Jim Ross helped convince WWF's owner Vince McMahon to hire him in late 1995. He debuted on the January 8, 1996 episode of Raw and was awarded the Million Dollar Championship by his manager, Ted DiBiase. Austin had his debut match on the January 15 episode of Raw where he defeated Matt Hardy. Initially, Austin wrestled as the ringmaster, but his full name was acknowledged by announcers, although it was not part of his official billing. While making his first pay-per-view appearance at the Royal Rumble on January 21, where he was scripted to be among the final four wrestlers in the ring, which could have given him an early push, however, Austin failed to hang onto the ropes after Fatu clotheslined him over and slipped out of the ring early. Austin wrestled Savio Vega on the March 11th episode of Raw to a double countout, before defeating Vega in his first WrestleMania appearance at WrestleMania 12 on March 31. At In Your House, Good Friends, Better Enemies on April 28, Austin lost to Vega in a rematch. At In Your House, Beware of Dog on May 26. Austin lost a Caribbean strap match to Vega. In accordance with the pre-match stipulations, DiBiase was forced to leave the WWF, giving Austin the opportunity to forge his own path. Austin later told announcer Doc Hendricks that he had purposely lost the match in order to rid himself of DiBiase, who in reality was headed for rival promotion WCW. Austin soon thought the ringmaster idea was weak and so asked for a change. The WWF gave Austin a list with names inspired by hitman the Iceman Richard Kuklinski, including Otto Von Ruthless, Ice Dagger, Fang McFrost and Chili McFreeze. Austin shaved his head bald and grew a goatee, while on March 11 the ringmaster moniker, now merely a prefix to his ring name, would be discarded in favor of his most famous nickname, Stone Cold. The name itself was inspired by a cup of tea, while his persona for the new name was inspired by Kuklinski. Austin 316, 1996-1997 Austin's rise to stardom began at the 1996 King of the Ring, where he won the King of the Ring tournament by defeating Jake the Snake Roberts in the finals. At the time, Roberts was portraying a born-again Christian, so after the match, Austin cut a famous promo during his coronation, mocking Robert's religious faith and proclaiming the now iconic catchphrase Austin 316 as a derision of the Bible verse John 316. Austin's win and rise to stardom proved to be an untelegraphed stroke of luck. Hunter Hearst Helmsley was originally scheduled to win the tournament, but plans changed as he was punished for taking part in the infamous curtain call incident that had transpired earlier that year. Austin 316 ultimately became one of the most popular catchphrases in wrestling history and subsequently the slogan became one of the best-selling t-shirts in WWE merchandise history. Austin would also be instantly cemented as one of the promotion's most popular attractions. Throughout August and September, Austin spoke about Bret Hart, challenging him constantly and taunting him relentlessly before Hart finally returned on the October 21st episode of Raw and challenged Austin to a match at Survivor Series, 
which he accepted. During an episode of Superstars taped on October 27, old friend Brian Pillman conducted an interview with Austin regarding his upcoming match. After Pillman inadvertently complimented Hart, Austin grew angry and attacked him. He then proceeded to wedge Pillman's ankle in between a steel chair and stomp on it, in storyline breaking his ankle. This would lead to the infamous Pillman's Got a Gun segment on the November 4 episode of Raw, wherein Austin broke into Pillman's home while he was nursing his injury, in an attempt to confront him. However, Pillman had been anticipating him and was armed with a pistol. Just as Austin broke in, Pillman aimed his gun at him ready to fire, before the episode cut to commercial break. The segment was highly controversial for its perceived violence and rare use of profanity in WWF programming, with Pillman using the expletives bitch and fuck. The segment is also credited for paving the way for WWF's shift to more mature and adult programming. At Survivor Series, in a match to determine the number one contender to the WWF World Heavyweight Championship, Austin lost to Hart when Hart used the turnbuckle to push himself backward while locked in the Million Dollar Dream and pinned Austin. During the 1997 Royal Rumble match, Austin was originally eliminated by Hart, but the officials did not see it, and he snuck back into the ring and eliminated Hart by throwing him over the ropes, winning the match himself. This led to the first ever pay-per-view main event of Austin's WWF career at In Your House 13. Final Four where he competed in a Four Corners elimination match against Hart, The Undertaker, and Vader for the vacant WWF World Heavyweight Championship after previous champion Shawn Michaels relinquished the belt due a knee injury. Austin was eliminated early from the four-way match at the event after injuring his own knee, and Hart would eventually go on to win the match and the championship. However, Hart lost the title the next night on Raw is War to Sicko Sid due to Austin's interference continuing their feud. At WrestleMania 13, Hart defeated Austin in a highly acclaimed submission match with Ken Shamrock as a special referee. During the match, Austin had been cut and was bleeding profusely from his face, but he still refused to tap out when Hart locked in his sharpshooter. Austin finally passed out from blood loss, still held in the sharpshooter, and lost the match. After the bell, Hart continued to hold the sharpshooter on Austin who despite his wounds refused any assistance back to the locker room, thus turning Hart heel and Austin babyface in a rare double turn. However, Austin portrayed an anti-hero instead of a traditional babyface. Austin eventually got his revenge on Hart in the main event of In Your House 14, Revenge of the Taker, defeating him a match to determine the number one contender to The Undertaker's WWF World Heavyweight Championship. Austin won when Hart was disqualified due to assistance from the British Bulldog, earning him a title match against The Undertaker at In Your House 15, A Cold Day in Hell. Austin faced Hart once again in a street fight on the April 21st episode of Raw is War, injuring his opponent's leg with a steel chair during the bout. The match was ruled a no contest, but Austin proceeded to beat Hart while he was on a stretcher in the back of an ambulance. At A Cold Day in Hell, Austin had The Undertaker down with the Stone Cold Stunner, but distracted by timely interference on the part of Brian Pillman, Undertaker then managed to hit Austin with a Tombstone pile driver and achieved the victory. On the May 26 episode of Raw is War, Austin partnered with the returning Shawn Michaels, as they both had a mutual enemy in the hearts. They defeated Owen Hart and the British Bulldog for the WWF Tag Team Championship, his first title in the WWF. Despite being champions, the two constantly argued and ultimately faced each other in a match at King of the Ring, which ended in a double disqualification after both men attacked the referee. On July 14, Michaels was forced to vacate his title due to an injury. That same night a tournament was held to determine who would face Austin and a partner of his choosing for the vacant championship. Hart and Bulldog won the tournament with Austin refusing to pick a partner and choosing to wrestle the former tag team champions by himself. Late in the match, a debuting dude love came out to offer assistance. Austin accepted and the duo won the match and the titles, making Austin a two-time tag team champion. Austin continued his feud with the Hart family, becoming embroiled in a heated rivalry with Owen Hart 
who pinned a distracted Austin and secured victory for the Hart Foundation in the 10-man tag team match main event of In Your House 16, Canadian Stampede, where Austin was partnered with Ken Shamrock, Goldust, and the Legion of Doom. At SummerSlam, Austin and Owen Hart faced each other with Hart's Intercontinental Championship on the line and an added stipulation that Austin would have to kiss Hart's buttocks if he lost. During the match, Hart botched a tombstone pile driver and dropped Austin on his head, resulting in a legitimate broken neck and temporary paralysis for Austin. As Hart stalled by baiting the audience, Austin managed to crawl over and pin Hart using a roll-up to win the Intercontinental Championship. A visibly injured and dazed Austin was helped to his feet by a number of referees and led to the back. Due to the severity of his neck injury, Austin was forced to relinquish both the Intercontinental Championship and the Tag Team Championships. On September 22, on the first ever Raw to be broadcast from Madison Square Garden, Hart was giving a speech to the fans in attendance. During his speech, Austin entered the ring with five NYPD officers following an assaulted Hart. As it looked like Austin was going to fight the officers, Vince McMahon ran into the ring to lecture Austin about why he could not be physically able to compete. After telling McMahon that he respects the fact that he and the WWF cared, Austin attacked McMahon with a stone-cold stunner, leaving McMahon in shock. Austin was then arrested as part of the storyline. Austin was sidelined until Survivor Series. However, in the interim he made several appearances, one being at Bad Blood where he was involved in the finish of a match between Hart and Farouk, which was the final match in a tournament for the Intercontinental Championship. Austin hit Farouk with the Intercontinental Championship belt while the referee's back was turned, causing Hart to win the match. Austin's motive was to keep the Intercontinental Championship around Hart's waist, as demonstrated when he interfered in Hart's matches on the October 20 and 27 episodes of Raw is War. Austin regained the Intercontinental Championship from Hart at Survivor Series. With Hart out of the way, Austin set his sights on The Rock, who stole Austin's title belt on the November 17 episode of Raw is War after Austin suffered a beating by his Nation of Domination stablemates. In the weeks to come, The Rock began declaring himself to be the best damn Intercontinental Champion ever. The Rock kept possession of the title belt until D-Generation X, in your house on December 7, when Austin defeated him to retain the title and regain possession of the title belt. As Austin had used his pickup truck to aid in his victory, McMahon ordered him to defend the title against The Rock the next night on Raw is War. In an act of defiance, Austin forfeited the title to The Rock, before tossing the title belt into the Piscataqua River. Feud with Vince McMahon, 1997-1999 after Bret Hart's controversial departure for WCW, Austin and Shawn Michaels were the top stars in the company. Austin won the 1998 Royal Rumble, lastly eliminating The Rock. The next night on Raw is War, Austin interrupted Vince McMahon in his presentation of Mike Tyson, who was making a special appearance, over the objection of McMahon referring to Tyson as the baddest man on the planet. Austin flipped off Tyson which led to Tyson shoving Austin much to McMahon's embarrassment, who began to publicly disapprove of the prospect of Austin as his champion. Tyson was later announced as the special enforcer for the main event at WrestleMania 14, although he appeared to be aligning himself with WWF World Heavyweight Champion Shawn Michaels' stable D-Generation X. This led to Austin's WWF World Heavyweight Championship match against Michaels at WrestleMania 14 which he won with help from Tyson, who turned on DX by making the deciding three count against Michaels and later hit him with his knockout punch. This was Michaels' last match until 2002 as he had suffered two legitimate herniated discs and another completely crushed at the hands of The Undertaker in a casket match at the Royal Rumble. With Michaels' absence and winning the WWF World Heavyweight title, the Austin era was ushered in. On the Raw is War after Austin won the WWF World Heavyweight Championship, Vince McMahon presented him with a new title belt and warned Austin that he did not approve of his rebellious nature and that things could be done the easy way or the hard way. Austin gave his answer in the form of another Stone Cold Stunner. This led to a segment a week later where Austin had pledged a few days prior in a meeting to play ball with McMahon, appearing in a suit and tie, 
with a beaming McMahon taking a picture of himself and his new corporate champion. The entire thing was a ruse by Austin who in the course of the segment proceeded to tear off the suit, tell McMahon it was the last time he would see Austin dressed like this, punch his boss in the corporate grapefruits and take another picture of the two of them while McMahon was doubled over in pain. In April 1998, it appeared Austin and McMahon were going to battle out their differences in an actual match, but the match was declared a no contest when Dude Love made an appearance. This led to a match between Dude Love and Austin at Unforgiven, in your house, where Austin hit McMahon with a steel chair, then the following month they had a rematch at Over the Edge, in your house for the WWF Championship. Austin managed to retain the title despite McMahon acting as the referee and his corporate stooges, Gerald Briscoe and Pat Patterson, as timekeeper and ring announcer, respectively. McMahon continued to do everything he could to ruin Austin and he finally scored a big victory for his side at King of the Ring. Austin lost the WWF Championship to Kane in a first blood match after The Undertaker accidentally hit him with a steel chair while the ref was incapacitated, despite Austin having knocked Kane unconscious and thwarted an earlier intervention by Mankind. Austin further angered McMahon by winning back the championship the next night on Raw is War. Austin also emerged victorious against The Undertaker at SummerSlam. In response, McMahon set up a triple threat match at Breakdown, in your house, where The Undertaker and Kane pinned Austin at the same time. McMahon decided to vacate the WWF Championship and award it based on a match between The Undertaker and Kane, in which Austin was the guest referee on Judgment Day, in your house. Austin refused to count for either man and attacked both towards the end of the match. McMahon later fired him, although Austin got revenge by kidnapping McMahon and dragging him to the middle of the ring at gunpoint, which ended up being a toy gun with a scroll that read bang. 3 colon 16 During that segment, McMahon also learned that Stone Cold was later re-signed by his son, Shane McMahon. In the semi-finals of the Survivor Series tournament to award the vacant WWF Championship, Austin lost to Mankind after Shane double-crossed Austin. The next night on Raw is War, Judge Mills Lane ruled that The Rock had to defend his newly won WWF Championship against Austin that night, as stipulated in the new contract Austin had signed two weeks earlier with Shane. The Undertaker interfered and hit Austin with a shovel, earning Austin a disqualification victory. However, because the title would not change hands via disqualification, The Rock still kept the championship. At rock bottom, in your house, Austin defeated The Undertaker in a Buried Alive match after Kane performed a tombstone pile driver on The Undertaker into the grave. With this victory, Austin qualified for the 1999 Royal Rumble. Austin's next definitive chance to exact revenge on Mr. McMahon came during the 1999 Royal Rumble match. On Raw is War, McMahon drew Austin's entry number with the obvious intention of screwing him over. Austin drew entry number one while McMahon drew number two thanks to WWF Commissioner Shawn Michaels. During the Royal Rumble match, McMahon slipped out of the ring and into the crowd as Austin chased him down. It turned out to be a trap as McMahon led Austin into the lobby restroom where he was ambushed by members of the corporation. Austin was injured and taken away in an ambulance. With Austin gone and not in the Rumble match, McMahon joined the announcer's table in calling the match. Later on, However, Austin returned in an ambulance and re-entered the Royal Rumble, delivering a stone-cold stunner to Big Boss Man and eliminating him. With the assistance of the corporation and a last-minute interference from The Rock, Austin was eliminated by McMahon himself, who won the 1999 Royal Rumble. With McMahon turning down his number one contender spot against The Rock, WWF Commissioner Michaels awarded Austin the title shot the next night on Raw is War. At St. Valentine's Day Massacre, Stone Cold got a one-on-one -on -one match against McMahon in a steel cage match, with the WWF Championship opportunity at WrestleMania 15 at stake. During the match, Paul White made his debut, breaking through from under the ring and attacking Austin. White's attack propelled Austin into the side of the cage forcing the cage to give way and dropping Austin to the floor first, making him the victor. Austin defeated The Rock at WrestleMania 15 to win his third WWF Championship. 
Austin faced The Rock in a rematch at Backlash, in which Shane McMahon was the referee. During the match, Vince McMahon approached the ring, only to hand Austin back his Smoking Skull title belt and take Shane out of the proceedings. Austin won the match when another referee made the count. Austin would lose the title to The Undertaker at Over the Edge. Due to events revolving around Vince McMahon, Stephanie and Linda McMahon made Austin the chief executive officer, CEO, of the company as part of the storyline. Vince and Shane McMahon challenged Austin to a handicap ladder match at King of the Ring with the CEO title on the line, which the duo of father and son won. The next night on Raw is War, Austin made it clear that while he was the CEO of the company he could have a title shot at any time and place to be determined by himself. Austin made the WWF Championship match that night on Raw is War and defeated The Undertaker to win his fourth WWF Championship. However, after he won it The Undertaker came and hit him with the title belt, leading to a first blood match between the two at Fully Loaded, where Mr. McMahon stipulated that if Austin lost he would never be able to wrestle for the WWF Championship again, and if Austin won he would never see McMahon again. Austin won after interference from X-Pac, hitting The Undertaker with a TV camera and gave McMahon a goodbye Stone Cold Stunner. Rivalry with Triple H and the Alliance, 1999-2001 Austin held on to the WWF Championship until SummerSlam, when he lost it to Mankind in a triple threat match also featuring Triple H. Triple H was originally scheduled to win his first championship at the event, but Austin refused to drop it to him believing Triple H was not over enough with the crowd yet, so Mankind would be used as a transitional champion, dropping the title to Triple H the next night on Raw is War. Austin would get his rematch at no mercy against Triple H, but he lost after The Rock accidentally struck him with a sledgehammer shot meant for Triple H. When Survivor Series rolled around, Triple H was still champion. Austin was booked into a triple threat match for the WWF Championship against Triple H and The Rock. However, at the event, Austin was run down by a car in the parking lot Austin then underwent neck surgery by Dr. Lloyd Youngblood, due to Austin's injury from the pile driver at SummerSlam two years prior. He was away for a nine-month rehabilitation, with the car angle being used to write him off television. In April 2000, Austin appeared at Backlash attacking Triple H and Vince McMahon to help The Rock reclaim the WWF Championship. After Austin's official return at Unforgiven, Commissioner Mick Foley led an investigation to find out who ran Austin down at Survivor Series. Rikishi admitted to being the driver because he did it for The Rock. Rikishi felt that Austin, 